Let's all pray we, we came this far. We come some, some beautiful people and they pray. So let's all pray together as a family. <coughs> oh, to Barshva, Katia Topa. Riders, they come from all over. Canada, Montana, Iowa, South Dakota, North Dakota, Minnesota. There's even a guy here from Austria. It's from all over the world, these riders come. And that's the point, that's what we're trying to do here is we're trying to reconcile, unite, make peace with everyone. Because that's what it means to be Dakota. To be Dakota means to walk in peace and harmony with every living thing. That is our way. This ride came through a vision of a man by the name of Jim Miller. And in that vision, he saw riders going east. We're going home. That's what we're doing. We're going home. In 2005, when I received this dream, as any recovered alcoholic, I, uh, I made believe that I didn't get it. I try to put it out of my mind, but it's one of them dreams that bothers you night and day. Oh, my coach and I stayed. Had done a whole week there. On Cartel Contica. On she made a turn off for quiet to get out there. On she took her. On she took it off. On Carnito, on it all the sky to stay here. My coach and I on Kiwa to my taco. Ekdashnia, Tagote Chunk to be. St. Paul Pioneer Press, 1863. Good news for Indian hunters. The Indian hunting trade, if the game be at all plenty, is likely to prove a profitable investment during the present fall and winter for our hunters and scouts in the big woods. Having increased the bounty for each top knot of a bloody heathen to $200. There is likely to be considerable competition in the trade, and the best shots will carry off the most prizes. Christmas here, the hawk and the hare. Taku, washiche hena wasra hair, sani na eda ega, wawa ke taka. With settlers encroaching on us, they push us onto a little bitty strip of land along the river. All of our people were put there and were not allowed to leave or hunt. The Indians could not leave the reservation if they left without permission they would be considered hostile and could be shot on sight. They were supposed to be given rations, to give them the treaty, but people get greedy, that's how they call them Washichu. They started skimming off the rations and pretty soon they were starving them. When they were starving them that's when this trader said, well, let them eat grass. And so they, they revolted when the fight occurred and many were killed. It was a very short war. It only lasted a few months. When it was over, President Abraham Lincoln hung 38 of our leaders at one time, one pull of the lever, 
which is today the largest max execution the government has ever carried out. My great-great-grandfather, Vox with Owl Tail, was hung that day. Those of us that are on this ride descend from them 38 that were hanged. never be able to feel what he felt but we understand he was a spiritual man and uh, he cared a lot about his people and I think if he was alive he would have did the same thing to remember he would have wanted to acknowledge the ancestors in a spiritual way and when I heard about this dream Uncle Sheldon Wolfchild he told me this dream that Jim had and I wanted to be a part of it there's something about that ride that pulls you to it, and you want to get on a horse and help out. You feel pain in your ribs, your back, your legs. You get cold, It's we've been through blizzards. A lot of times, if you don't own a horse, you end up on the horse that nobody wants to ride, so that's a sacrifice in itself. I just want to tell everybody here that I love you very much. We don't have to blame the Washichos anymore. We're doing it to ourselves. We're selling drugs. We're killing our own people. And that's what this ride's about, it's healing. exiled from Minnesota by an order of the government which stated to annihilate the Indian race or forever push us from the borders of Minnesota and that's what happened. Thousands and thousands of our people were slaughtered, froze to death, starved to death. Disease took a lot of our people also. A lot of them were marched on foot, some were brought on uh, cattle trains. Got down to St. Louis, they put us on uh, river boats and they were brought up the river to where we presently are now at Crow Creek, which was at that time a prisoner of war camp. From there, our people scattered to the four directions. Some of them, you know, would jump off their boats and just drown themselves and they couldn't deal with the hardships. And so it was a horrible thing. They thought it was the end of their world coming here. They had no more hope. And so for us, this journey back this ride back is taking our, our their, their spirits back, taking it home to the homeland. And we're gonna show up in Mankato at the hanging site on December 26 at 10 a.m., which is the anniversary of them 38 that were hanged. When you have dreams, you know when they come from the Creator. You just know it. 
And I was no one, it's a significant dream because he says, I've got to tell you this, you know. And so he gets up and he says, I've got to tell you this. And I don't know what it means, but. And he started telling, telling me. He was being directed to make these offerings around the horse. The horse would carry these offerings. And that these offerings were for um, all of the men that were hung in Mankato. Didn't know about Mankato till I had this dream in 2005. In his dream, he he seen all these the 38 basically being hung at the same time, and they were all reaching out, holding each other's arms. ancestry starts over there in Mankato. So keep that in your hearts. Keep that in your minds as we travel. So I love you guys very much. I'm a real easy man to talk to. I'm kind of a quiet guy. I pretty much keep to myself. But any atrocity that happened to you, any of you, it happened to me. I was sexually abused, physically abused, spiritually abused, emotionally abused. I have blood on my hands. I'm a Vietnam veteran. I spent time in Leavenworth. So I've been, I've been through the course. Any of you need to talk to me, call me aside. We're all equal in this room. Nobody's higher or better than anybody. We're all equal. So let's have a real beautiful ride. We got a long haul ahead of us. I never did this before. I don't know what I to expect in the next 16 days, but you do. You're my family. Oh, I to do a little bit This horse has the six directions that we use in our ceremonies. The two front legs represent the west and the north. The two back legs represent the east and the south. The head points up, the ears point up. Represents Wakatakya, up above. The tail points downwards towards Mother Earth. When you put those six directions together, it creates a sacred center to bring Wawaka in. It's a sacredness that you can only have with these six directions. And you can pray while you're on your horse. You can think about a lot of things. Some people can remember things that ancestors went through. It's the horse leading the way because of its healing power. <laughs> It was good to walk in their steps and be on the land where they were. Just a completely different energy around here. Feel it. I feel like a different person now that I came here. Today we're riding because of a healing that we need to continue. The reservation where I'm from is the poorest county in the United States with an average household income of $5,000 per year. We also have one of the highest suicide rates in the world. There is something that we suffer from. So basically I'm riding for my family because they need help. 
already lost my oldest brother. He passed away four years ago. And two of my other brothers are sitting in jail. My family's slowly falling apart, and this is why I'm doing this for them. And now my little brother, he's getting sent away. I wanted to go see him before he gets sent away next year. But I came here, and I don't regret coming here. So all I can say is I'm honored to be on this ride. And I thank you for listening to me. It's just not for our Dakota people, but everybody involved. So if you have horses or you want to be a part of the ride, I mean, come join us. This is our family, and we want you guys to be a part of it. So thank you. I didn't know Mankato, like 38 uh, Native Americans were hung there. I had no idea about that. Like, I'm not Native American, but my mom's like Native Canadian and up there. And so like just having a little bit of that in me and hearing this, it's like really means a lot. So, thank you. Well, that was pretty good though, talking to them, you know, letting them know our side of the story. And not what just came out of some book that some dude wrote, you know, coming from the, the real thing and from the people that are experiencing it. Yeah, that's pretty good. It's pretty good ride, man. <laughs> In spite of the burnt burger and yeah. the doughy pizza. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was just a joke. <laughs> and I really don't associate with Caucasian people. I don't know why it's just. Oh no, I never really, I used to like when I was little, I had like different races of friends when I was little. Like we might as well just put it on the table too because it's the truth and it's the only way that we're going to be able to come together. You know, like my people and me, and we've talked about this, there's a lot of racism, you know? Mm -hmm. So I think, and I'm, I'm willing to say, yeah, you know, I have some racist moments where I think, oh, okay, you know, like they just did that because they're a white guy or they're, they're not going to get it because they're white. They're just not. I was like feeling like I didn't want to be a part of this anymore because I was feeling like everybody was talking to me as like Dakota Sarah. Like, oh, well, like, you know, like you're Dakota first. So I'm going to ask everything, all my questions based on your race. You have to understand there's a certain amount of curiosity coming into a situation. I mean, if uh, someone from Africa came to me, they would have a million questions. I'm sure about Adam the white guy, the Italian kid from Long Island. So the fact that the questions are getting you know, directed at me makes me feel like, oh, Adam was the only one who was asking questions, the only one who didn't come from the heart. Supposed to be getting storm here in the next couple days. Be real cold. Real cold. <laughs> Forecast this morning said uh, Saturday, Sunday, Monday blizzard warnings. So. <laughs> <laughs> Not much to say. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> I think some of the things that they're doing, like this ride are important for their heritage. I think all people should be proud of who they are and their ancestry and their heritage. I'm proud I'm Norwegian. <laughs> golden, golden rims. <laughs> I got pimped out here. <laughs> Does she know the price in there? 
How much a tire yeah. was? Just, hey, just don't worry about it. Oh, come on now. I gotta give you something. Don't worry about it. You sure? Yeah, appreciate it. I really appreciate it. Yep. Yeah. I wouldn't be so generous, but I just watched that movie Pay It Forward, so. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I wish more of this country was that way. Yeah. Needs to go back to that. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. We've got too many people that are worried about the dollar instead of yeah. helping the human exactly. being. Exactly. Exactly. I'm getting back in. I better go. Yeah. We'll <laughs> yeah. 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 I'll just fill that up and I'll come back out and shut that water off. Okay. Some people have loaded their horses here already. Yeah. Uh -huh. and this isn't where the horses are supposed to be today. Yeah. Uh, we didn't get permission to do that. Uh, they accept us. This uh, Jim, Jim, uh, Francis is his name. Jim. Yeah, he's yeah, the uh, he, county extension agent that I've been talking to. Yeah. So he's here? Yeah, he was here. He gave me this key. Okay, that's that's good enough. To water right. and good enough. Water. Okay, I'll get some snacks together and stuff. Oh, that would be so awesome. Yeah. Oh, they would love that. <laughs> okay, sure. And it made me feel uncomfortable because, like, in the back of my head, I always, you know, look at them. I was like, they're probably uncomfortable with all of us in here. Don't trust us too much or something. You know, it's, I don't know. It's just how I grew up. How much did you ride today, man? About, I don't know, 30, 40 miles. <laughs> how you feeling? Sore. <laughs> what do you guys think of the horses? If they're not, it's what they hurt your butts. They hurt your butts. Yeah? <laughs> Are you recording it? Yeah, man, you're on tape. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> can I ride it? How can you get up? How can you get up? Oh, I sure can't. Sorry, I'm not big enough to. Yeah, jump on the chair. For me, I love each of you. These little guys here, we're doing that for them. Our culture is one of. <clears throat> oral everything's passed down to us riding across there today I was crying coming I wonder what my relatives endured when they came down on the boat when we were taken off the boat our first homeland in 1863 our first home was a stockade when Sitting Bull heard about that as a young man he came on horseback to see how the people were being treated. And they were being treated worse than animals, I said, and that's why he stood his ground like that. These people call me today. There was two ceremonies that were going on back home called Uweepies. They said that crazy horse in Sitting Bull is riding with us. That means a lot to me. with a 
regular pair of gloves and was out there about 15 minutes and my hands started to get frostbite. I saw the weather report and it said 45 below 50 mile an hour winds and it said you're taking your life in your own hands if you're on the road. So. Wait until noon, you know, 12 o'clock. Let's see what the weather looks like today. The last time I walked with uh, people, men and women like this, I was in a Marine Corps. Yesterday, you know that bad blizzard? These riders wanted to go. They saddled up, they warmed their horses up. We couldn't even see 50 yards. Cold. And, uh, they, uh, they still wanted to ride to make this trip. That's how important this is to us. So if you don't mind, we're gonna just kind of wait this out. Yeah, and then, you know, if it gets really bad, we got that Quonset, you know, we can put the horses in there. There's quite a bit of room in there. Can we take a look? Yeah, okay, yeah, let's go do that. Right. So uh, <laughs> let's, let's get some panels and panel this off. Okay. Yeah. is in the Quonset and so I came back home and then I'd say it was like uh, four o'clock or something yeah it was late afternoon yep when Jerry called mm -hmm. and said you know where can we go to buy hay because the horses need hay mm -hmm. you know I don't know where I'd send you I know a lot of guys have got hay but I don't think you can get there but I said you know why well, don't know I'll try when he came back to the door and he was all full of snow and I said what happened he said we've got it we got to get the tractor going because I'm stuck up here in the um, ditch. He said, I didn't even make the corner. I thought, oh my God, if it's that bad, why are you even out? She gets me out and I tell her, you know, you just need to take the tractor, go home. Then when I take off west and uh, it's terrible. You know, I, again, I can't see anything. There's drifts on the road and all of a sudden I'm right in a ditch again. And this is over a mile from home. And, and he called me and he said, how are you doing? And I said, not very good right now. I said, I'm in a ditch. He said, what? And I said, yep, I ran in a ditch uh, trying to get to town. It's crazy, man, it's how you call it. I never really thought of those people doing something like that, you know? She went out in a tractor Ma'am. and hey, found him Mark. somehow in that <laughs> blizzard. You almost can't nice. top that as far as Real support. Hard, yeah or commitment to what we're doing. All the way from Marty, South Dakota. We have any Choctaws in the house? Follow me, Mark. Follow me, Ron. come with the message of forgiveness and healing and we all got to share this planet together well that's the purpose of your ride is to you know have some reconciliation you think that's already happening maybe in some ways oh no doubt i had an outpouring of support and love westington springs and at howard 
So I give my blessings to them and we pray for them. Thank you very much. Yep. Very well Appreciate said. it. Yep. Thank you. That was wonderful. Yep. Uh, we'll get that microphone yeah. off you too. And sure. We'll let you. Thanks a lot. That was good. Do you really, everything else you, you, you did a good today. job. Thank you. Well, I love you guys and you guys have a good day and oh, you as well. We'll be we'll be around. We got lots of good pictures to get here today. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, you bet. Have a safe ride. You bet. I will. Yeah. Yeah. This is awesome. <laughs> To hear someone who's, you know, not angry at all and says, you know, this is about forgiveness. Wow. Not what I expected. There's a lot of racism in this state. There are a lot of people that are against Native Americans and kind of, kind of don't make any bones about it. It's okay to be who you are. You're Native and you should be proud of it no matter what tribe you're from. Get to know your history because we are an awesome people and... You guys should be so proud of that. And I was in an eight by five cell, and it was hard. It was really hard. You know, I shed some tears in there. They said, men don't cry, but we do. It takes a real man to cry. And uh, thank you. The reason why I'm doing this, this journey is so I can maybe help one of you in this room today because uh, our people are lost and it's up to us to keep our language and our culture alive. We have to be the leaders because we're the next generation and it's up to us. If not, our culture is gone, our language is gone and the Makaija, the youth, the next generation, they won't, they'll be lost. They'll have nothing to turn to. On November 26th, I celebrated a year of drugs and alcohol, you know, and it's just, uh, I ain't gonna lie, sometimes I feel like using, you know? I get it on my old buddies back home and say, oh, come on, have a beer with us, you know? let's, go, let's go get high, and I got this joint, you know? But uh, I choose to pray and go to sweat lodges. During the summertime, we attend Sundances, and um, it's, uh, it's hard growing up where I'm from. You know, Pine Ridge is a hard place to live. They call it Poverty Plains, you know, but we choose to live like that, you know? And now, me riding is to make, hopefully make a change for our youth so that they won't have to grow up in the society that we grew up in today. I got caught speeding and he left me behind. <laughs> <laughs> they turned the lights on him, so I drove around him. <laughs> Where your trees parked? <laughs> <laughs> Any suggestions from back here, boss? Uh, My main concern is like a. <laughs> What's next to <in> Canada? <laughs> uh, again, for my family from here, you know, it's, it's good to see everybody in. And my main thing was to see you guys laughing, fed, and all that stuff like that. So, you know, I extend my thanks. And uh, when you guys are coming over this hill down here, this little town Eden, that was that was what I got afraid of. Man, these semis on 34. You know, they're going to come flying over and as cold as icy it is. So I just stayed up there and I you know, see the vehicle try to slow them down. This is a lady right here. This is a step. She has been really great in uh, doing the uh, uh, coordinating the, so much of the food, the health, the whole works. She's been fantastic. I had food coming all morning to my house, so my truck was loaded. <laughs> yeah, there was not even a question. As soon as we heard about it, we got the email, we responded back right away and said, yeah, count us in, we'll, we'll help out, so. When they marched the 38 to be hung, you know, they marched um, to Manicato, and then after they hung them, they buried them in a mass grave, and the doctors from the local area they dug up the bodies and used them for science. So when we learn that history, then then it's really hard.
I own all the land back here. I'm just curious what is going on. I've seen all the trailers there. And I grew up in Minnesota, and I had no idea that there had been a hanging of 38 warriors. And then the boarding schools, of course, to try to turn all the Indians into white people, and their spiritual ceremonies were illegal until 1978. Maybe U.S. white America will reach, or maybe is reaching, the point where they can start acknowledging what really happened in this country. They can acknowledge the massive land theft, three billion acres within the continental United States. Maybe they can acknowledge the broken treaties, over 400 of them broken and violated by the United States of America and its U.S. Euro-American citizenry. Maybe they can acknowledge the genocide that occurred. 16 million native people within the continental United States, around 1,500. And by four centuries later, 1900, the U.S. Bureau of Census said there's 237,000 left in the U.S. What happened? I can feel that there's nothing left to be concealed. Moving on a scene surreal. No, my heart will never, will never be far from here. Sure as I am breathing, sure as I'm sad. It's like my brother and I, we grew up shaking hands with everybody. Whether well, you seen them last night or, you know, stick that old black paw out there. Let somebody shake that thing for you. You shake it back. And, and when you got love in your heart, they feel that love. It could be the most bitter SOB there, but you know, he'll, he'll, he'll cool off and slow down. And like I said, we don't discriminate against anybody on this ride. Anybody's welcome. I was always scared to tell people that I loved them and I'm not anymore. So um, I just want to tell you guys I love you and thank you for being here. I know it's hard, but um, let me know if you need anything. I'm more than willing to help with Doc Yassin. No, it's your ankle. That one guy said he saw her step in a crack. Yeah, it's her ankle. Well, she ain't gonna make this ride. I'm, uh, <clears throat> you may not know it. Because I don't tell very many people. But I'm 100% combat related, disabled. 100%. Jim knows what I'm talking about. As a Vietnam combat veteran, my PTSD really kicked in today. It's a post-traumatic stress disorder. I'm 100% disabled. And the, the doctors tell me not to be on a horse. Today is really kicking in. <laughs> Which 
I'm glad you guys let me be part of this. Oh, let me talk you up. With that wowakan inside those six directions, you place a man or a woman on a horse, you give it the seventh direction, which is the chokata, the center of all things. It represents mitakayawas. Everything is related and balanced. And you put that all together and you move forward, you're able to create power as you go. So that was their justification for going to war that it was either to defend themselves rather than starve to death. I learned a lot about the 38 plus 2 because while I was on that ride, I could really look into the past while you're sitting on that horse and it makes you realize you have a lot of time to think. Kata <laughs> They say that the spirits are the ones that lead the people there in front of that staff. They're the ones taking us through this cold weather. These elements, they say these elements are part of life. We didn't realize how inspirational this was going to be. If they would bless us by coming back again some year, we would, we would really uh, welcome them and we hope it's an annual event, but we hope uh, the weather is a little bit more cooperative. <laughs> all the vehicles we have lots of land and we have pasture for the horses and a shop to feed everybody and we just thought it was just a really neat thing you're doing and a good message for the season and something we wanted our kids to experience with all of you and that's we thought it would be more personal here so i'm gonna sing the song on behalf of uh, my relatives here to to honor you today for this grateful thing that you've done for us <laughs>
like we couldn't even see. Like, I mean, the cars couldn't even see. The horses were like doing this, like the faces, the wind's coming from this way and everybody's going this. Julian stops, gets out, we're shutting it down, we're shutting it down. Everybody gets off their horses, they're not room enough in the car. I look over, there Gus's like truck is and trailer is in a ditch over, like things going terribly wrong. And it didn't need to happen, man. It like, it just, you have to have a conversation, talk about it. We have two days of rest, the 21st and the 22nd. Today is the 20th, right? You don't ride today. You wait for the storm to pass Saturday and Sunday, like, you know, the weather report said it was going to be horrible, and then you ride on the days of rest. He hit the ditch back there. There's no room for horses. Yeah, you got to make arrangements. You're going to haul horses there. You know, you're going to stop it. You got to haul them back. Shit, man. You just stop, stop. We'll Jesse, keep what are you going to do? I don't know. There's, I got to have my horse safe, not out in the middle of the road. Makes complete sense to me, but since I'm not involved in this, I'm not a leader, I can't... You are a leader, yeah, Adam. Yeah. We are all leaders. Yeah, we're all leaders. Come on. That's, what, that's a great saying, and I'd like to believe that. All we're doing here is a lack of communication. That's all we have. I told you guys when we first started, I'm the only the person that had the dream. So I try to step back, and I try to let these leaders step up. All right. Could have made it easy. Yeah, they knew there was. Yeah. Yeah. This girl got kicked. Got it. I saw that. She got kicked this morning. You see that? The little girl got kicked by uh, Chris's horse. Right in the hand. She got right across the knuckles. Where I come from, is everybody is mostly still mad and about what happened and, you know. That's probably another reason why I don't really get along with the Caucasian people. It's because of the, the 38? Yeah. They rose up to defend themselves, starving to death, to protect their land, their way of life, and their people. Was it wrong to defend ourselves? That's the question. Within weeks, 500 whites, settlers, soldiers, and government agents were dead along with a smaller but unknown number of Indians. There were pretty horrendous deeds done on both parts. I mean, some immigrant from Germany who wasn't privy to the signing of Traverse de Sioux Treaty was probably pretty shocked to see his wife's you know, womb cut open, a baby taken out and brained against a tree, just as later when New Ulm people attacked the Indians and killed a woman's child in front of her. You know, there's no heroes here. It was just, it was an ugly situation. When I think about Abraham Lincoln, that, that's hard to swallow because he freed the slaves, but yet really succumbed to pressure from, from the people to hang. You know, there were supposed to be 300, over 300 that were supposed to be um, executed, but he um, reduced it to 38, you know. We say this is a spiritual ride. We're going to be the first ones to ask for forgiveness. We want to say our apologies as the natives. We want to step up and say, hey, you know, we apologize. So we're going to be the first ones to forgive what happened when they hung our ancestors in 1862. We're going to be the first ones to forgive.
know, I have anger in my heart too, and I take care of it the best I can. And I feel like I, I've done pretty good in the last 10 years, moved forward pretty good, and it's time to let those things go and press forward, you know, in a positive way. You know, Poncho and I are the ones who were interacting with the family, talking with Eli, talking with Taylor, the daughter. She just Facebooked me, talking with Brady, you know, because other, if we don't, if we're not talking with them, uh, everybody else, you know, within, it, within my opinion of the Native community is doing their own little thing in, in the corners. Dave said he's never been into a white person's home and he's from Siston, you know, and yeah. that's where all those guys are from. I, I, so it's like, yeah. probably hard for them. I know it's hard for them, but those people could not have made it easier. And I'm not saying they, how, what they were feeling, or, but this family, like, they had Wopita for peace on their <laughs> sh shirts with a horse in rainbow letters. It could not have said, like, welcome with their names on the back. I mean, they went to a lot of trouble for this. Yeah. I don't know if they normally walk around with that or they did it for this ride. Yeah. But they had, you know, the whole, <laughs> they had the whole thing going. I feel like we let them down a little bit, actually. Yeah. As a community. I don't know, it's just how I was grew up. Not having them trust us or thinking we we're gonna steal something or, you know, something was gonna go missing and they were gonna blame us. So I didn't I didn't really feel comfortable stopping at all those houses. I mean it's cool that they that they did that man. I, I like that a lot. Uh, it's pretty crazy how it all worked out for the horses and for us. <laughs> Oh. What are you doing? Wait, recording. <laughs> yeah. What's your I'm name? Just gonna Amber. Stick Amber. Are Egan. you gonna ride Amber? <laughs> are you? Are you excited? Yeah. You're a part of this group now, so like, don't be afraid to tell them how you feel because they don't know that, you know. Well, to like do it publicly is a big. Yeah, but is a big thing. But now you're part of the group, so. But but am I? Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I feel like I am, but then. It's kind of like, you know, am I? A lot of us uh, are getting sore throats and headaches and stuff, and it, it, it's kind of hard to be in this climate if we're not used to it. And I know the Canadians, they don't care. They go around naked. <laughs> I've seen... I seen uh, Carl walking down the creek with just a blanket on this morning. <laughs> he was going to chop a hole in the ice and take a bath, he said. <laughs> but uh, I think one of our leaders here made a, some medicine in that container over there. Feel free to get some, especially now when it's really warm. And that's, uh, uh, us guys take medicine as high as we can take it. I mean, I don't want this ride to end. I want to keep keep this ride going because this is the only time I ever felt ha happy. And because <clears throat> back home, it's really hard and makes me feel good riding for for my people. And, Our people suffer from something. An elderly woman, a full-blood Dakota from where I'm from in Crow Creek. I was with her one time and uh, well, a lot of bad things were going on. A lot of bad things. And I had asked her, uh, why does this always happen to us? Why do we do these things to each other? Why does it always happen? And she didn't say nothing. She was driving a car for a while. I looked over at her, she was crying. And she said in her language, Ioki Shicha. A deep embedded genetic depression. See, our people at one time, the Dakota people, or all Native Americans, had a very strong connection with the Creator a very strong connection with Mother Earth. 
a very strong connection with nature, the forces of nature, all living things on this planet. And all this was taken from us, like that. And we lost this connection with everything that we had. That's where this depression comes from. A lot of our people are severely depressed, and they don't even know it. This depression is just now clinically diagnosed as the same thing soldiers suffer from when they return from combat. In 1967 and 1968, I served in a place called Vietnam. Probably young people don't know where that's at. And at that time, I uh, took 38 lives. Had no connection. Didn't make no connection with Mankato. Didn't know about Mankato till I had this dream in 2005. There's 38 that were hung, and how does that all tie in? I can't say that I know. I mean, I really don't. But he had an experience around the fire, which I'm not gonna go into deeply because it's his, his experience which clearly showed him some things that he needed to do to release the, um, the 38 Vietnamese men that had been killed, you know, killed by him. And all of this was told to him by his mother, and his, his mother passed away when he was 10, but she came out of the fire and told him he needed to do this. I'm kind of an emotional guy. Those coming down the road, uh, my boarding school days kicked in. My days in Vietnam kicked in, riding into the city. So all my abandonment issues, the hurts and the pains that I went through, coming down the highway this morning, I was wondering what our people went through the day before the hanging. What were their thoughts? Their feelings? In the early hours of Friday the 26th, as the time of the execution approached, some of the Dakota men lay sleeping on the floor. At dawn, many of the condemned men said goodbye to their captors in a display that fascinated the reporters. They shook hands with the officers who came in among them, bidding them goodbye as if they were going on a long and pleasant journey. wanted their medicine man to speak on their behalf. The words are, don't let your heart be sad. We're gonna see each other again. And when we see each other again, your heart and my heart's gonna be so happy, it's gonna cry when we come together again. That's what the song says. Man. 
It was the day after Christmas when they hung them. You know, that's terrible. That's something very terrible to do during such a sacred time. You know, and those are things that we're slowly trying to wipe away, and it's working. And so the ceremony continues as we eat tonight, get up in the morning and get our horses, have our ceremonies, and, and start our final ride to the hanging site. Yeah, start, yeah? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Don't worry about it. Woo! Woo! For this event, for the memory of the 38 Dakota, not only do we have a horse, a ride, we also have a run. Not only are we remembering, we're honoring our ancestors and those are, that have passed and struggled before us. It means a lot to me. We're kind of, we're kind of tracing through the footsteps of the 38 Dakota plus two that had to go through this. So we're kind of, I don't know how to explain it, but we're kind of going back through that experience again. I've always believed in, you know, that they're watching over us, you know, like, you know, it's not just us out there running. So that's just kind of the way I see it. We know our history and it hurts, but we're no longer in that prison no more. Reconciliation means something to everybody. And I think it's a collective. And uh, we actually also had the opportunity to catch the run. Uh, we ran for two miles uh, at about 3 a.m. So it's been uh, quite an adventure for uh, the five of us who were there last night. So uh, thank you to the riders. Thank you to the runners. that fateful day, they were led out of the prison compound. They were shackled and chained together. They had hoods on them. The women began wailing and weeping. One of the prisoners in a loud voice said, Namach umfo metakwepi, hear me my people. Today is not a day of defeat. It is a day of victory, for we have made our peace with our Creator and now go to be with Him forever. Remember this day to tell our children so they can tell their children that we are people who die and know with death. Do not mourn for us. Rejoice with us. It's a good day to God. And then he lifted up his voice and began singing.
I just want to tell all of you that I love you. We're doing this for our children, our grandchildren. And I want to thank all of you that helped me fulfill this dream. It's been a blessing for our people. 53 years ago, I entered uh, first grade and I was taught nothing but misinformation about the people that preceded me on this land. And it wasn't until the 1980s when I walked into my first powwow at the Land of Memories when I realized that I didn't know anything except lies, for the most part. And so I started that day to listen. Whereas the Dakota people lived in unity with the land for many years long before the European people came, and whereas the Dakota people have suffered unimaginable hardship over a long period of time as the land and riches they once had were gradually removed from their control. And whereas the Dakota people have many times been forcibly relocated at the whim of the United States government, and whereas one outcome of their trials was the largest mass execution ever recorded in U.S. history during which 38 Dakota were hanged. And whereas the Dakota people have put forth tremendous effort in an attempt to continue to heal from their suffering over all these years. And whereas the people of this community welcome the Dakota people to be part of our community today and always. And whereas the people of this community recognize the responsibility we must bear in this healing process. And whereas the people of this community wish to be part of the healing process as the wounds begin to close. Now, therefore, in recognition of the tremendous contribution made by the Dakota people toward the, that healing process to our community and communities in the region, I, John D. Brady, Mayor of the City of Mankato, Minnesota, do hereby proclaim December 26, 2008 to be Dakota Reconciliation Wokiksuye Day. And in the sense of true reconciliation, I just want to say, welcome back to your home. Just one little thing and then I'll let you go. And so just a little symbolism of that welcoming. I'm going to uh, also uh, offer Jim a key to the city of Mankato. <laughs> it's a key that uh, opens no locks, it only opens hearts. <laughs> Thank you very much. I think each and every one of you here in this room I think the city of uh, Mankato hope this opens a jail cell or two. <laughs> I'm going to pass this staff on. I have uh, two extra feathers for the two Dakota that were hung two years later, and I want to present them to him also. We are going to keep this going from here forever. We're going to keep this ride going. There's a bald, bald eagle just after he started singing. It was soaring just above us there. Good to see that. <clears throat> To see something like that would, you know, would make you cry. Make any man cry to see something like that, you know, happening. Because that's, this is, this is real. You know, it's not going to end for me. I'm just going to keep that happiness with me, you know. I'm not going to, like, once this ride ends, I ain't going to leave my, my emotions right there and just go back home to what I was doing. You know, I'm going to take it with me. It's going to come home with me. We've got to strive for that reconciliation. Let's go home and reconcile our families, our differences. Let's go home and hug our children, tell them that we love them.